Hi friends, it's Donna from Many of Aprons and this is part two of our project of Mod Podge vases and as you could see it came out really nice. Now I had to go in and do, where is it, right here, I had to go in and do more toilet paper. Oh, it feels so good. It feels like a um, cement-like. It's really nice. But I wanted to show you, which is good, because I wanted this to come up a little further. I painted this white with acrylic paint, white, and uh, a medium. And I mixed the two, not a lot of the medium. I just wanted the medium so I can have it go smoother because we've got a lot of crevices. And as I look it upside down, I look to see if there's any spots I had missed, which, yeah, maybe I did. But I have all this to paint, repaint, and, and the top because I did fill in a little bit more. Now, <laughs> I went and jumped ahead of myself with the other one. But first, what I want to tell you is what I used. Okay, let me just show you. Isn't that just beautiful? I think it's gorgeous. And it's going to be the sister to this. But this one's going to have what I'm going to show you up here. It's going to have the, it's not Jude. I wanted it to be a dark and I really didn't want to go through painting the jude black or dark brown and waiting for that to dry i really i in our next video we will do that i just wanted to get this this here done but isn't that just gorgeous it has such beautiful texture okay and then what i did was i painted the inside not all the way just about up here and i there, I had used a different kind of acrylic paint. This is Color by Flex, which I like this uh, um, paint when I do my artwork because it's almost like a, um, it's acrylic and it's water-based, but it's it dries and works like oils and it gives it a shine. It's not flat like most acrylics on canvas is flat looking to me anyway and this gives it a nice shine i'm not advertising for them i'm advertising that i like this product then i don't get no money for that <laughs> not yet <laughs> no i'm only kidding anyway so that i painted i took the burnt uh raw umber and lamp black and i used two and one ratio so double this to one dot dot to this you know but we'll show you that i'll get to that but anyway let's make this uh video not too long so i have my white acrylic and i'm going to squeeze because this is the end of my white i'm going to have to put it in some hot water and try and get some more out of it because there's a lot in there so a dab, dab, dabble, <laughs> dollop of that and a touch of my medium. Just a touch. I got a little sparkle in there. I don't want. I, oh, there's another one. Oh. Okay. Yeah, my Anyhow. So we'll paint that real fast, and then we'll get to what I'm using for the string, which it's, I'm just going to mix it up with my one and a half inch brush, nylon brush, and we're just going to quickly paint that all over again, and we will have to wait for this to dry, I forgot. Uh, uh, but where, how I got mine to dry real fast, um was um we have a wood burning stove so i set up a table with it sitting on there <laughs> and not on the wood burning stove but on the table and it um just dried quicker it was nice so i'm just gonna go around 
I wanted this white because I really like the way the brown pops on that. I really do. I think it looks so nice. Yeah. Get that. Now we'll get the top because I had to fill in that because some pieces didn't have it. And when I go to paint it, you want to see it. I mean, yeah, paint the inside. When I go to paint the inside, I want to see the round like that, you know? So it looks really pretty, I think. I think these look like they come from Bob Pottery pot, bon, bon, Barn, however you say it, Pottery Barn. I don't shop there, but they're too expensive for stuff I could make like it. <laughs> For my taste. Yeah. Even sometimes I love Hobby Lobby. I love their, their stuff, but I look at it and I thought, you know what? You can paint that. You can make that. You don't have to pay $25, $35 for that. And you probably make two or three of them. So, seems we have to wait for this to dry now, because I forgot. I'll explain a little on this one. I'm going to have to rinse that. But on this one, I don't remember if I told you, but I got peaches and cream yarn. Now, I either got this at Joanne Fabrics or I got it at Hobby Lobby. I know. I'm not really sure, but I think I got it at Hobby Lobby. One of them, anyway. I was crocheting a runner for my table. You need to get, when you go to get yarn, which I will have a class on crocheting, but you make sure you get all of your yarn, even if you're not going to use it, double it, because the dye changes. And if you bought three, and they all look the same when you're crocheting, and you don't need any more, and you bought, I mean, you know, you need three, buy four, just in case. And uh, and you really need to look at the dye lots. There's a number on there that has a dye lot number, and that is a number that these were the same ones, like if you got three of them with the same number and one without the same number, the color is not going to be the same. Even if it says dark taupe, it's not going to say. It's not going to be because you'll come home, do your crocheting, and the one will either be too light or too dark for your dark taupe. Anyhow, this is four ply. And I really like it. I mean, it just made a beautiful, and it just, it's rich looking, I think. Now I'm going to paint the bottom. No, I know that one looks it, but I'll paint the bottom. Once I'm completely done, I could stand it upside down and just let that dry. But I'm not worried about that right now. So what our next step is for the finished part. Okay, so I I told you the colors I'm I used for the inside. It matched it. Just it matched it. Just great. I think it just touched it off. You know, look at it. This is Don't you think it just makes it look so rich? Oh, it's so pretty. I can't wait to get this done. But anyway, um, uh, I decided when I did this, I did the bottom and then I did just a little bit of this, but the yarn, the, yeah, the yarn was not staying there. I had to use some hot glue and I really didn't want to use hot glue because I'll show you why. <laughs> I don't know if you could see it, but see how the glue it just just doesn't look right. So I do have a couple of spots like that, but I'm not selling this. This is going to my daughter and I do want it to be perfect. So I'm going to figure out a way of cleaning that up somehow because I really didn't want that in there. But um, this is not glued only where I start it and where I end it, but I had to re-glue a lot of it because it wasn't staying. So I decided to take that out 
and do more Maj Paj with the toilet paper up here and make it a little bit wider. So anyhow, our next step is Now, I didn't have any more of that other clear um, crayon. Cray cray I, I don't have any more of this. So, the thing I do have is the Ultra Cover. Now, I'm kind of leery on trying something different. This my husband had, honestly. Um... I just don't want to change the color of my decoupage. You're not decoupage, but maj page. So, but all else fails. I'll have to take this on and scrape it all off and start over or paint over it. I have no idea, but I'm going to, that's our step for this one. This one's all ready to go. I'm just going to put this clear on it and let it dry. And, uh, yeah, isn't that just beautiful? I just love it. Can't wait for that one to be done. So I'm going to pause this video and get that dried so I could show you how to put the jute on. So I'll be right back. Okay, so I actually took my bow dryer, hair dryer, and blew it dry. That was a lot faster. I mean, I do that with my artwork. Okay, so like I said, we're going to use the four ply string yarn. And what we're gonna start with is a, oops, is a clean end. Cause I usually, for some of these, I tip the ends a little bit to, all right, so. I'm going to flatten, separate the yarn, separate the yarn and make it so it's flat. Just the beginning. And I'm gonna dab a little glue, hot glue on it, just a little. Oof. Just a little. And we're gonna find a spot to start where we can hide it. So I'm gonna just, Oops, lay it on there like that. And just flatten it in. Just flatten it in. And I'm going this way with it because I can twirl it. I could spin. Oh, I did go the wrong way. Because I want to hold this. Oh, yeah, I did do it right. Okay. So. I had to think about it. So what we're going to do is we're going to take this and just, that's glued, and just follow, just keep rolling. See how it just slid down? So, pull this on tight and hold it with your thumbs until you get a lot on there because you could always press it down that way press it down towards you towards the top well I guess this is not going to work is it not unless I glue a little bit more on it. It worked on the top. I don't know why it's not on here. All right. Maybe we'll have to start down here. Try it again. Sorry. Yeah. Get that in there. A little glue there. Ah, maybe it was better back that far. Okay. And we might have to glue it. I don't want to. 
Not after seeing what it did to that. But I guess we're going to have to. We'll have to go around, around the edge of where I want the yarn. Just a little light. Just a little light dab. Not a whole lot because it, like I said, it ruins the yarn. And press it in. See, that's not even staying. So I'm going to have to glue that right down. Not this, not this one, this one down here. Hey, this is real world. This is real world in the art studio. Okay, maybe I can get it to just spin. I'm just going to spin it until I get a lot. I'm just going to wrap it around. Just keep going like this. And then I'm going to drop it down like that. Drop it down as far as I can. Might have to pick it up a little or loosen it a little. Mm. There we go. I was just trying not to have to use the glue. Now I'll pull it tight. There we go. Okay, maybe that'll work. Let's pull it tight and go around again. And press down, pull, press down, pull. Press with this finger down, press with the thumb to your line where you want it. And just keep going. Hopefully it'll stay. You can use your finger there to press the other side. You can feel it. Oops. With your fingers and holding it tight to get the starting part is the hardest, but you have to use a little glue. I'm going to have to maybe put a little more, just fake make the yarn there. Or wrap it again. I don't know. Let's just keep going. This is starting to look good. Hold it. Fingers starting to hurt, but <laughs> now if you're the the first time on my station and this is your first video seeing and you didn't see the beginning you'll want to look for part one of this it's called Maj Paj plastic vase part one and it'll show you how I did this here So far, so good. Just keeps overlapping. <laughs> Just keep pulling it tight and pressing. That's looking pretty good. I know, I gotta fix that. But as long as you're holding it tight, you won't need to use glue. Hopefully. I know we'll have to use it at the end. When we get there, but see how this is rounding out. So <laughs> hopefully it stays if I keep pulling it tight. Uh. Well, we had um, most of those videos I've done at the in the past. There we've had snow on top of snow. Well, yesterday 
it was like 45 degrees. I went outside and took the rest of our Christmas stuff down. Christmas lights in the trees and on the house. It was such a beautiful day. I have daffodils sticking their noses up. Little stinkers. I don't know if that's a good sign or not, but daffodils. Ah! Well, oh, it's about, their heads are, I mean, their leaves are about that tall. Hopefully that's a sign that winter is going to be short. That's looking good. Nice and tight. It's just the struggle again in the beginning, but you can do it. It's a lot of fun. And you gotta press down a little bit to make sure it's going up even so you have enough of a space here all the way around the same space. Press it down. It'll make it tighter too if you do that. Looks good. Looks really good. Now it could be the way I put the mo the Maj Paj is a little thicker on some spots or lower, which should be all right. I can go over it or that feels good. Feels really good. Nice and tight. That's what I was looking for. Now, I bet you two to one, if you go on to Wayfair and, oh, what is that other one? Potty, pottery barn. Like barn. Barn. <laughs> oh, I can't say that. Um, you'd find things like this on there and they'd probably want 25 to $30. You know? And you've made it yourself. All right. Hey, we're up there. We're all, we're up there. So what we're going to do is we're really going to find a spot that, like right here, it's a little, there's, I don't know if you can see it. It's a little indent to the paper. And so I'm going to just cut it right there and do the same thing as we did at the beginning. It's just separate your yarn put a little dab of glue on the yarn itself. Oops. Don't want to get it on the This is hot. And we're just going to press it in. Uh, before it press it in and hold it. Oops. <laughs> just press it in and hold it. Just like that. Isn't that beautiful? Now I'm going to see about fixing this. I might be able to cut it out. Oh, yeah, I can cut that right out. I'm going to. Cut that glue right off. I just cut that little piece of glue off and I'm going to try and tuck that in. Try and tuck that in. Perfect. Because it was the tab that I started with, but I went over it with the yarn. A lot better. A lot better. That's one, one step done. Now we're going to paint the inside. That's not going to... I think I might have to take... Burnt my finger a little. Yep. And just go over it with a little glue. I guess I could have used my popsicle stick to do that with. All right, let's get that paint. I put it away. I don't know why I did. I forgot I had a paint inside. Let me unplug this. Yes. Let that cool.
cool down. We don't need the glue gun no more. That looks so pretty. I'll be right back. Let me go get my. All right. So we have our raw, raw, raw umber. <laughs> this is from, it's a color by Flix. And I'm going to put a good helping of that in there. A pea side size, and then just a touch of the black, just a touch of the black, and that'll darken it up to make it a, a brown. And I'm going to put a little medium in it so it'll go a little longer, long further around. Chris, this is plastic, so. Not that it wouldn't, so I'm just going to put a little drop. I don't know if you could see that. And I'm going to mix those up. Oh, that's a pretty brown. See? It's a pretty brown. So it's two parts brown, per, a raw umber and one part black. Okay, so what I do is I take my brush and I slide it around like this, just to get the edges first. There's one thing is that you've got a lot of paint on that brush to get this. And don't worry if you get a little on your white, um, there, like I did, you could always take the paint, the white paint, and go over it. All right, load your brush up again, and then what we're going to do is we're going to go in and go up, just like this. Go up, 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 as far as you can down, as far as you can go down with the brush. You want to give the illusion that it's, see? So I do have a little right there. When that dries, I'll put a lot of white right over it. It should hide it. So we'll just give that a minute to dry. And I should have more than enough paint here. In fact, I'll pause you a minute and I'll dry it. Alrighty, so it's dried now. That's the quick way of getting acrylic paint to dry fast is use your blow dryer. All right, so we're gonna go back in. I'm gonna do the same thing. I'm gonna go back in, roll my paintbrush around it. Just like that. I mean, if this started to dry out, you can use a little bit more medium to get it to get wetter. And then just slide your your brush in there and come up with it. Till you get all those lines out of there. Yep. I might need a little bit more medium because it's starting to get tacky. Just a tiny bit. This stuff is wicked. There, that loosened it up. I don't particularly care for this medium. It's a like a, this medium has like a gloss to it. And I don't care for it. I don't know, a flow medium, but it's, it looks like it's got a gloss to it. But it's just for this, so I don't care. It's. Probably something I got from my mother because she did artwork when she was alive. You know, every artist, every craftsman, craft person, even woodworking people, whoever, whatever you're used to using, it's hard to change um, 
I say always do what you feel comfortable with. That looks good. I don't know if you can see it, but I can. It looks really nice. Let's get that out of the way here. So, the only thing left is the shellac. Don't they make a nice little pair? I think they're beautiful. Now, I have one thing I was going to do, and I'll show you, was you can either use them as vases... Or you can get these little plastic plates that you get them at the Dollar Tree. Just little plastic plates. They have them for there. And you could sit them on top of there and put a candle. Probably not too big of a candle. Uh, I don't have anything too small. The only thing I have are these big ones. But I didn't think they looked very well nice on there. Well, maybe it's the color, but... <laughs> color candle, but a small candle would look really pretty on there. Now, I wasn't sure if I should glue them on because it it would hold a candle just fine. I don't have, <laughs> well, I do have this candle. Let me see. Take it out of here. And it might be, I have this artificial can candle. I don't know. I don't know. But, you know, that's an idea. You could always leave it there and put some candy on it. Or you could just leave them as a pair and put them on your shelf. Lay Well, I hope you enjoyed and learned something with me. Um, this isn't the first time I've done it. This particular pattern or uh, technique. But on these, the shape and... Stuff, but anyhow, I've enjoyed spending time with you. I hope that you will do it yourself and enjoy it. I hope you have already started doing it because it, like I said, it feels like cement. It feels really good, but it's silky. It's not. It doesn't scratch like cement, and it's heavy, but it's light, you know. And you could use them on your shelf. Put a few things around them. I was thinking of putting brown along here, but eh, I like it just the way it is. So I'm going to shellac them and it should be, it should just hold up really well. Um, I don't think you want to put anything wet in here. Well, water can go in there. Yeah. And once, once I shellac it, I think it should protect it from water. But anyway, God bless. And thank you for spending this time with me. And coming back to watch part two. See you in the next video.